come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show and podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, you can help us in that task by hitting that like or subscribe button. Uh, all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. Uh, I mean, you found us wherever on uh, iTunes or uh, Apple Podcasts. Sorry, it is. It's known now. Uh, Spotify, <laughs> YouTube. You can have your uh, she who shall not be named artificial intelligence uh, hockey puck uh, call us up. Um, no, Colin, you should say, <laughs> Alexa, please subscribe to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. There, I hope everyone's Alexa oh, okay. at home did that. <laughs> See? Uh, <laughs> so who are these people who are talking to you, the internet radio superstars? Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. I was going to say Sean. I was like, in my head, <laughs> I Sean. Was gonna, yeah, I was going to say it just because he did that to me, but I know who I am. So yeah. <laughs> You're not having important. an identity crisis. That's right. Yeah. This is important I'm aware of you know who, who I am, are. unlike Sean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin. What did we watch tonight, finally? Finally, we watched Grizzly. From the year. 1976. Directed by. William Girdler. Who do we know? Do we know him from anything else? Do you remember William Girdler? Do I? The no. Girdler. The Girdler? <laughs> it makes him sound like a 70s serial killer. It He's does. the Girdler. <laughs> I keep picturing the Hamburglar. Oh, see, I was picturing like women are getting dressed and he pulls their girdle so tight it kills them. Oh, the girdler. fuck. The girdler. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go, like yeah. an old West serial killer. Yeah, there yes. you go. Let's make Let's it. <laughs> cop copyright 2021 Saturday Night Freak Show. There the you go. There it is. You don't remember. We did actually cover one of his movies before. Which that one? That was uh, The Manitou. Ooh. Ooh, the Manitou. A truly unforgettable movie. That's true. Yeah, I was looking up today. Uh, <gasps> Leonard Malton did not like the Manitou. I'm like, yeah, how could you get this so wrong, Leonard? He, he's very wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. Sometimes the greats get it wrong, though. You yeah. Know? Well, yeah. You got to go back and listen to our episode. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about William Girdler's mm -hmm. career. Then I have since seen some of his movies since because uh, there's one that you will never see, apparently, because uh, Warner Brothers. It was called Abby, and it was like a black exploitation ripoff of The Exorcist that was so close to the plot of The Exorcist uh, that Warner Brothers sued to have damn, it removed I see that. from. It is on YouTube. It gotcha. It has William Marshall in it, who is Blackula. He's in it. He's sure. You know, I love that guy. Yeah, He's yeah, so charming. That That's like why you want to yeah. see it. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, he did a movie called Three on a Meat Hook, which I also saw. You don't need to see that. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> he did Sheba Baby, a Pam Greer movie. I kind of like. That's so. true. I like that mm -hmm. one because I think that might have been what he did just prior to this. I think so. I think it was Abby. Uh, I think he also did like maybe a, a, a biker movie or a woman in prison movie. I'm not sure. Have you seen Asylum of Satan, Colin? Because that title not... intrigues me. Did he do that? Yes. Okay. That's not I, did, I didn't look into it, but I saw the title and said, I'm sold. I like, that one... sounds like a movie that you would search out. Yeah, because yeah, I think <laughs> I watched the documentary that was included on uh, Grizzly that had some footage from Asylum of Satan, and I'm thinking you probably don't want to see that one either. That was okay. like fairly uh, okay. early in the career. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but he followed this one up the following year with um, Day of the Animals, uh, which is kind of like, I mean, it has uh, uh, Christopher George, who's in this, is also in that, except that one has Susan George. You know, because I mean, you got to right. have for for a true Christopher George experience, you need both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then the following year, he made or following movie was The Manitou. And then as he was scouting a uh, uh, his next movie in the Philippines, his helicopter crashed into some high tension wires, and he was killed. Wow, wow, that's yeah. that's intense and sad. Really yeah. sad. Yeah. So kind of as his career was building, building, building. I mean, because the Manitou was like his. How know, old was he when he died? Budget one. I think he was like early. Th he was might have been like thirty. <gasps> wow, what? that's crazy. I was I was just looking at his IMDb right before we started recording. I was like, what the man? He he did a hard stop after the Manitou was. I was thinking, oh, that makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. man, yeah. that's rough. Yeah. I mean, I heard you know his friends and acolytes will all say like he could have been the next Spielberg. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> that's, I don't know about that. But people, it would be interesting to know what he would be doing now. People, you know, right. he people get really generous when people die. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. And well, not that not not that he isn't great because the Manitou is fucking I, awesome. I would say not even when people die, but like people make one good movie and they're the next 
somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, right. you remember when the Sixth Sense came out? Everyone said M. Night Shyamalan was next. Hitchcock. Yeah. Like, oh. like it, it, it doesn't take much for what people to overhype. time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> old in theaters like, now. If anyone has seen Old, I want to know what you think. <laughs> yeah, I have seen Old. I'll tell you after the show. Okay. <laughs> right into the mailbag with your spoiler-free thoughts on Old. Spoiler-free. There you go. Um, so yeah, um, Grizzly obviously is, uh, it was alternately, I mean, I saw a poster of it where the top of the poster said claws because it came out the year after jaws. Jaws, yeah, yeah. It was the first, uh, jaws clone to make it to theaters. Uh, so because of that fact, I think it became a huge hit like mm-hmm. at the time. Um, so a hit in theaters. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, people went to see it uh, a lot. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it was one of the most popular movies of 1976. Nice. Wow. Because you were riding on the coattails sure, of, yeah. of Jaws. I think everybody was hungry for like the next one. And then for the next, uh, whatever, 10 years, you got a bunch of uh, Jaws clones coming out. I mean, I, I guess that makes sense why they call them the next Spielberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I get it. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense now. So who do we have in uh, Grizzly? Who's our, our lead uh, performers here? Christopher George is a person in this, right? Yeah. I'm not going to be honest. I was really into their performances. I don't remember their names. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, Christopher George, we've seen him on this show. He seemed familiar. Yeah. Okay. So according to MF mm-hmm. Mad, the keeper of the Saturday oh, Night Freak Show oh. Wall of Fame, we are finally inducting Christopher George to the Wall of Fame because Mr. he was- George. In, yeah. Welcome. <laughs> kind of the feels Ranger. overdue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you go back and listen to our City of the Living Dead episode, we did a lot about, you know, because there was like a Christopher George Day because of like his service in, I think, like the Korean War or something like that. He actually had like a day uh, because Mm -hmm. of his heroism uh, back then. But we talked a lot about it on that show. He was also in Pieces. Who can forget Pieces? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Wow. That's a real (laughs) trip of a movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was like... uh, known if for these type of movies it's like it seems like you know christopher george if you're following like 70s 80s horror movies there's usually he usually does appear with his wife uh you know susan george and uh or was what am i saying it's uh linda day george my god i misidentified her <laughs> <laughs> linda day george <laughs> is in the movies with him um but he was in a movie well he was in uh uh was it el dorado Yes. with uh john wayne he was also in chisholm with john wow. wayne. Mm-hmm. and it turns out i don't know if the casting director knew that they were doing this but his two co-stars were also in chisholm what? with john wayne yeah both uh richard jekyll and andrew prine who are also in this movie mm-hmm. <laughs> were in chisholm oh my god and andrew prine was in lords of salem yeah wow <laughs> he's still working Good for him. You know what? Good for him. Because he was like a personality back in this era, too. I mean, I remember the first time I saw Andrew Prine was he was a bad guy in V, the uh, series and miniseries. That is connected to apparently everything we do on this show. I I think it's right. From from Mark Singer and Beastmaster to Andrew Prine. The um, outfits were recycled and rad. Right. It's I think it's that, connected. It's six <laughs> degrees of V at this point. Weren't the guns or the helmets were recycled and like. I don't know, it wasn't yeah. Starship Troopers or something, but um, but he was also in a movie that we we haven't put him on the wall yet, but he was in The Town That Dreaded Sundown. Gotcha, yep. Right? And uh, he was in, I mean, just like a scores of stuff from back then, but there's a title that like called Simon, King of the Witches, where he's Simon, mm. the King of the Witches that mm-hmm. he was in. And uh, Richard Jekyll was also in a bunch of other stuff, but we've seen at least one other movie that he was in. If you remember the green slime. Yes. Oh, how could I forget? Oh my <laughs> damn. Now I need I really want to re- re- rewatch that because I'm thinking about that like key party they had yeah. that was yeah, yeah, yeah. hopping. I was literally just talking to my coworker about that the other day. There was a song on and he was like, Oh, this sounds very like sixties, like sci fi. And I was like, <laughs> if you slime. want I was like, if you want a solid sixties like sci fi theme song, look up green slime. Yeah. yeah. It's Fan fucking test. <laughs> yeah, and you got to go back and listen to our episode because I think we play a little bit of it on that so you can sample. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so if you're gonna rip off Jaws, I mean, how close of a Jaws rip off is this movie? I mean, I don't think it's as close as it gets to ac- accused of being. If that makes sense, like, like if they went as far as to be like. It's Labor Day weekend. It's the busiest weekend of camping season. Like that'd be the, and like really kind of hit the, like it's there's gonna be more people here than any other day. Yeah. Like Jaws does, you know. Yeah. Then I would be like, okay, they're laying it on really thick. 
But they say at the beginning, it's the end of the season. People are on their way out. The busy season's behind them. Like, true. So, but I do understand, like, the, obviously, the comparison of the the main, you know, the main creature that's attacking, and then we have the uh, the you know standard politician that doesn't want to shut down and doesn't want to like, yeah, that's clear true. everyone out. So, like, I get it. I get mm-hmm. the similarities. We've got the one lone cop that wants to you know take him down. Mm-hmm. I see it. Yeah, and he keeps it's, on getting interference from right. a dude who's like, "Yeah, I don't think it's closing the park." <laughs> I don't think it's it, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, I don't think it's in your face rip off, but I mean, I get it. <laughs> yeah, especially because like the three main actors that work together to kind of take down this grizzly, I don't think they have the same type of relationship at all as in in Jaws. I think it's right. they, these these three guys seem to be work together very well from the jump. You right. know, they don't have to earn each other's trust or go through any backstory or anything come like together that to take down this beast. Yeah. They've been working together for quite some time. Yeah. This is their yeah. job. Just, it's just a little more stressful than it normally is, you right. know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, I got, I think it is significantly different, but you know, even while I was watching it, I was sitting there going like, okay, which one's Quint? Quint's the crazy one who goes out in the woods and lives with the grizzlies, right? So Scotty, Scotty, Scotty. And yeah. this one, the Richard Jekyll <laughs> character. Yeah. Uh, which one's Hooper? I'm like, I guess. I it's guess Don. Yeah. The pilot. I, yeah, mm-hmm. I guess it's Don. Because he's got, yeah, I don't know. He, he has a sad war story. That was the. Because uh, I was <laughs> yeah. like, is this the Indianapolis speech? Yeah, like, it is. The it is. <laughs> it totally is. But like the way he explained it at first, I was like, oh, this is gonna get real sad. And then the turn it made, I was like, oh, he's not bothered by this at all. Yeah. That's a different way to He's take like, yeah. this. I remember he had the, but he told the story about like the uh the in the Indians that were attacked right. by the whatever herd of grizzlies. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, this is your Indianapolis yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Holy sure. shit. It For wasn't sure. anywhere near as good. Oh, see, I was no. more thinking about when he was talking about when he was in Vietnam, that oh, scene. Okay. Where where you like, oh, this is gonna get real sad. And then he's like, and then I just turned into a killing machine because I didn't think of them as people. And you're like, oh, that didn't that's not what Look, I, where I, I vowed this never to, go. to kill again, so that makes up for it. Yeah, Let's go kill this thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then like later on when they're in the helicopter, he's like, I'm feeling that urge to kill something again that yeah. I haven't had since the whatever. Jesus. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um I think Don needs some therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they also had like, I guess we're substituting a helicopter for the orca, but it didn't get all three of the guys on the on the helicopter no. at the end of this. I mean, if you, you know. Yeah. Um, okay, so I mean, obviously, it's a movie about a rampaging grizzly that's killing uh, hikers and backpackers and all mm-hmm. sorts of people. In uh, we established this was Georgia. It's filmed in Georgia. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to be Georgia. Like I, it the, it kind of seems like it's supposed to be more out west because I don't think Pacific there are. Northwest yeah. is what it feels like. I think that's where it's supposed to be because that makes more sense for grizzly country. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, it was filmed in Georgia. Okay, so maybe yeah. that's it. So yeah, because yeah, it. it we were trying to figure out. I wasn't looking at license plates, which is usually the thing that you're supposed to do to sure. determine where the hell you are. But uh, all the uh, signage is just like National, national Park. park. <laughs> yep. This way to the National Park. Like, okay. Their jackets just say like Depart- Ranger. Ranger and yeah. then like Department of Natural Resources, Law Enforcement. That's it. Like yeah. there's no specificity to mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So it's kind of nondescript. Um, we're introduced, first of all, to Christopher George, who's uh, Michael Kelly is his name. Mm-hmm. And is he... it Michael Kelly? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that's what IMDb said. Because I kept looking at his shirt, and his shirt said K. Kelly. Really? Yep. Continuity error, I guess. Yep. Huh? <laughs> you caught him. You because caught him. at first I thought it said R. Kelly, and I wanted to laugh Uh-oh. really hard. Yeah. <laughs> and that's then an age well. And then I looked, but I was like, no, it says K. Kelly. Okay. So I was yeah, but his name is Mike. Yeah, Mike, Michael. Mike okay. Kelly. Yeah, All right. There's okay. a there's a silent K at the beginning. No one ever calls him uh, Michael. Kelly. Or Mike. It's no, just yeah, it's Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> including his. Uh, so he's got um, a bunch of uh, park rangers who work from him. We sure. thought that he was sleeping with at least the two sexual of them. tension <laughs> amongst this man and all of his coworkers is ex- rampant. You, you could slice it mm-hmm. like it's it's prominent. Mm-hmm. Like I think he's sleeping with everyone, yeah. men and women, mm-hmm. all of them. We were surprised actually when it turned out because like I thought like you did that the, yeah. the first girl who comes up she's the one she's who's like I'd li- never miss a Kelly meeting. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're yeah, like, clearly there's something going on there. But no, she's dating uh, the other dude, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Who's like, yeah, we'll be home for dinner or whatever. We can go to go to dinner tonight. Yeah. I'm like, oh, there's like, together. oh, like, so she's the... sleeping with both of them because they're is, she's definitely sleeping with Kelly. Like, there's no, no, yeah. no, no <laughs> doubt about it. Yeah, because like that scene later where 
we'll get to where she undresses at the waterfall. Sure. I kind of felt like she was waiting for him to show up. Yeah. Like, this really? Whole, yeah, that's what it felt like. This whole movie is a porn setup. This entire fucking movie. <laughs> but yet movie. there's no sex scene. None. None. PG. Right, Colin? Yeah, you said PG. PG? Yeah. Movie for kids. Yeah. Take your kid to the drive-in I mean, and go honestly, see Grizzly. <laughs> yeah, I'd show this to kids, I think. <laughs> well, it's just, I think there's a, a level of violence uh, and gore that we're unaccustomed to now, but yeah. it's like, you know, you know, this is the stuff that I would have wanted to see when I was 12, you know? Right. Yeah, obviously. Um, and I don't think it harms you that much to see, you know, people being bisected and their arms going flying through the air and blood fly, flying mm-hmm. all over the place. I mean, really? Does that, uh, I mean, does that do something? It's to you? probably a good thing you're not a parent, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I guess like, I don't, I'm trying to think if I, if I saw this as a kid, if this would have given me like an irrational fear of bears, but I well, don't think so. I don't think so. I, this seems like a very specific circumstance and it's very easy to avoid this situation, yeah. you know? So. Yeah. Well, who are the first people? Oh, well, first of all, well, who is Kelly sleeping with? Oh, um, so he's actually involved with like a journalist that's, that's there. Um, she, she have like a photo journalist. She's a photo journalist. Her dad, her dad owns the resort, like the local, like you know, it's like this movie's version of like Kellerman's from Dirty mm-hmm. Dancing, like the local mountain lodge. Mm-hmm. Um, her dad owns it, and she's there taking pictures of the end of the season, the mm-hmm. colors changing and whatnot. Real, real rich kid scenario. My dad owns this resort, and I'm yeah. a photo journalist. Yeah. Like, okay, like, all right, yeah. I'm, I'm sure her pictures are really nice. Yeah, like, are they for an actual job, or no. is she just there taking well, pictures? I think she exactly. Said she was working on. There's like an art project or something that she an was, art project. Yeah, mm-hmm. was she like 50 pictures away from having something that she could uh-huh. turn turn in in New uh, York? I don't know. Well, and as uh-huh. Holly pointed out later on, she's taking pictures at night with no flash. Yeah. So I yeah. mean, she she's doesn't really know what she's doing. Really good at well, photography. Some of that. <laughs> I had like because that scene in particular shot her on a campfire, and when you do those, they were saying behind the scenes as the uh, the crew right uh, making this movie, you have to adjust your iris uh, on the lens so the the fire doesn't over bloom right. But right. what it does is it sucks all the light. They're probably blasting light all over the place. Yeah, we can't see it. It looks like it was shot in the fucking dark. So she may have had a flash, but it wouldn't even register on film. I do kind of appreciate that the darkness is realistic in this movie. Yeah, like I was just gonna say that. Yeah, it's not like the moon is like a mile away and everything's lit up like we see in every movie now, or even every movie like 1990 onward. I feel like, but um, it's it's even like there are a point in times where everything is dark except the actor's face who is talking, and I liked that. I was like, this feels real. It looked pretty good. mm -hmm. Yeah, and you still get that. I mean, it's even though. That's something that, like, being in a stage can't convey. There's still, like, I mean, it's through sound or something, or maybe it's just a little bit of wind, but they feel like they're outdoors in, you know, there's woods behind Definitely. them. Definitely. Even if well, I can't see there them. There is consistent, like, birds and creatures. Like, there's, ambient const- sound, there's yeah. constant ambient sounds of nature in this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The soundtrack, I, I honestly, the ambient sound and the soundtrack, like, put that on a record for me. I'll listen to it. I can get down with that. The soundtrack of this movie was expressive as fuck. It was. It sounds like a John Wayne movie. Yeah. yeah. It is always underlining everything that's happening. Even if you're, nothing's happening. The music, something's happening. Yeah. Well, who is, uh, so who plays uh, Christopher George's love interest? Oh, what is her name? Uh, Joan McCall. Who we would know from. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just discovered her and we she's did. amazing. We, yeah. we just discovered her filmography, which, um, Consists of four movies, and uh, I don't remember what the other ones were. Something Devil, Devil the, Times Five. Devil Times Five yeah, was the her first her first yeah. movie, and then the second one, a movie called Act of Vengeance, <laughs> used to be called uh, Rape Squad, I believe. And all three of us desperately want to see this yeah, movie. Yeah, <laughs> yep. American International Pictures. So yep. that means it's uh, yeah, going to be something. It's what? a feminist like rape revenge movie, and yep. I am here for it. <laughs> and I will say her IMDb lists her as being a story and screenplay for Grizzly Two: The Revenge. Ooh, oh, so, I was going to tell you about that. Oh, there's a sequel to Grizzly. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Oh, <laughs> so. um, and oh, I'm sorry, I need to interrupt this. She was in a movie from 2007 called Lady Samurai, and let me just show you the poster for yes, this real please. quick. It looks like a student film. Oh, Stop. Oh. So well, she was a screenwriter no. too, I think. Right? Didn't yeah. she write like a bunch of soap opera, like Santa Barbara or something like Days that? Days of Our Lives. She yeah, was a writer yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So anyway, who's our first? How do we know that something's amiss in this uh, national park? What happens uh, to set this all up? Well, the ranger comes up and it feels like 
uh, we're on a softcore porn because yep. he comes up on two girls that are camping and they have mm-hmm. a bunch of like, don't get in any trouble now type banter. Yeah. And uh, they- don't worry, we'll be out in time. <laughs> yep. And they have a tiny, tiny, tiny tent. We're just going to eat first. <laughs> yep. And that's exactly how the scene goes. And we're like, oh man, they're going to start with a fuck scene. Nope. There's yep. no sex in this movie. No. Uh, and then a grizzly come. A, I say grizzly. We see paws mostly. Yeah. Uh, but Murder we do get bear mittens, cam. Yeah. We yeah, get bear cam, view, which that, that I thought was kind of interesting because I thought it was a tall grizzly bear. And then at one point, the, the camera actually goes up. I yeah. Like a gym, but it's like, holy shit. This thing, yeah. It's, it's like two stories tall. 15 yep. feet, Colin. <laughs> it, uh, it like so it does a lot of like swiping motions, this grizzly. Yeah. And when it does, whole things come off. So oh, yeah. it, it swipes at this one girl and her arm just completely flies off. Right. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it is pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, PG. PG, <laughs> but there's an arm flying through the air landing. I will landing. never get over PG in the 70s. I'll never get over it. <laughs> it's a real risk when you see PG in the 70s. It could be anything. Yeah, it yeah, basically it means nothing. It like, means nothing. Yeah. Um, they get mauled pretty bad. The one girl, she runs to, is it just like a shack? Yeah. Yeah. Like a cabin? It's like a random, okay. it must be like a hunter's cabin yeah. or something Yeah, like she that. runs yeah. to that. The bear knocks down half the cabin <laughs> getting to her. And... <laughs> mauls her and then apparently throws her up in the rafters based on what we see later right, on. Yeah, right. when they find her. So. <laughs> like the body flops down. Natural. I love the way that it was The like timing sh- worked out very well for that. Yeah, there was a <laughs> shock cut when that thing came out. I think the movie did that like a couple times. It was like she's in and you know, it's like uh, and you know, we know the grizzly's gonna come probably through the door or mm-hmm. something and then it just shock cuts to like you know, mm-hmm. uh, boards being blown off with this big clawed hand. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we've got two dead um campers on our hands at this point they're missing the they they're missing because remember they checked in with the ranger and promised they'd be gone by by sunset and that they wouldn't and cause they, any trouble they haven't been back yet so they are considered mm-hmm. missing now is this when uh christopher george had his first blowout first of several blow ups with the park supervisor superintendent whatever right because at this point he's just flirting with the photojournalist and like oh well let's go find them you know mm-hmm. thinking everything's fine mm-hmm. And then that's when they discover the bodies. And then this is when we have our introduction to the uh well, that's right, because the park we, owner. We also have that Jaws scene of the uh the in the um pardon me, the medical examiner's office right. where it's like, This is a big one. Yeah. This has got the biggest, you know, whatever yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a huge grizzly bear. Or it's definitely a grizzly does he say it's a grizzly or we get that from Scotty later? I can't remember if that was the medical examiner, but it's like you got a problem on your hands. Some mm-hmm. bears wandered down from like up north and whatever. And then the park uh, superintendent comes in and these two get into a shouting match because they're always every single time that we see them antagonistic towards each other. <laughs> there Which, is serious sexual tension. Yeah, it, it is a dick measuring contest every yeah. time. Every like, time. Too. They totally want to kiss. Uh-huh. But, oh, yeah, okay. but I'm, read it. I'm OK with like it because both actors are trying. They are like, giving it their all. Everyone I was here for these two throughout this entire movie. I was here for it. I usually like yeah. sometimes scenes like this in a movie can feel extraneous and boring and just kind of like, OK, I get it. Let's get to the point. But in this movie, like everyone's trying so hard and yeah. no one's phoning it in and everyone seems to really believe in this project yeah. that it works. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, 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 spittle flying. Yeah. yeah. I, I, fist yeah. pounding on desks. Yeah. <laughs> Listener, I, I actually turned to Colin and I was like, considering the quality of this movie, I am surprised at how good the acting was just now. <laughs> yeah. I was into it. I was yeah. invested. Yeah. I was too. Well, uh, MF Matt also lets us know that we are inducting uh, Joe Dorsey, who played uh, Charlie Kittredge. That would be the uh, park, the park supervisor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's being inducted. We're, we're going to say the hallway of fame. Yeah, hallway. hallway. He's hallway mm-hmm. for sure because uh, he was uncredited in the Manitou. Of course, he played a character named Doctor Snaith. Mm. What a name! This. All right, All right. And he was also the caretaker in Pet Cemetery Two. Oof. Oh my! I try to forget that movie. There you go. Oh, that movie. We've all forgotten that. I don't remember his uh, his role in mm-hmm. that film. Uh, so this uh, this turn of events then that we have, uh, there's a grizzly out there. So we're going to have to summon the grizzly expert. Scotty. Okay. So why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, this is a fine character. How are we introduced to Scotty? Oh. <laughs> Scott, Scott, they they talk about Scotty being an expert, and we are introduced by, to Scotty. He is hunkered down in his own little like camouflage 
den wearing a, a deer skin and trying to like be amongst a family of deer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming to tag them or something. Is that what I his guess. job is? Because they say at some point that he's tagged all the bears in the park. Right. I mean, I'm, I guess that's probably his job to tag all the animals so they can keep track of everything. So I'm guessing that's that's his plan. But right now he's just like becoming one with the deer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's your Jeremiah Johnson. He right? is he your is Jeremiah that, Johnson. Yeah. Lives absolutely. out there in the wild with all the animals. Uh, and he's recalled back to home base so that they can, uh, you know, we got to we got to yeah. take down this. He's bear. very upset that he gets a radio call that scares the family of deer away. He's yeah. Very upset. Well, I mean, you know, there they go. You, you say know, you say Jeremiah Johnson. My immediate <laughs> thought was Timothy Treadwell, the grizzly man guy. Oh, yeah. uh, and I was yeah. like, oh, oh right, this is this is. This is a type of person that exists in the world. Yes, this yep. is yep. true. They unfortunately true. share similar fates. Yep. Um, yeah, <laughs> don't ever watch Grizzly Man documentary unless you want to, like, if you're severely depressed and you want to wallow in your depressed feeling, go ahead, watch Grizzly Man. If, you, if you're not, watch Grizzly. It. Yeah, watch Grizzly. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to have fun, watch Grizzly. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's a series of, um, so basically, this is, becomes like the, the setup of the movie is uh, the. Park Rangers attempts to flush out and find the grizzly um, and the grizzly killing people. This actually, like, this goes on for, like, quite a ways because eventually there's uh, hunters all come in. I can't remember if somebody else was killed before the hunters showed up. There was uh, um, the campers, right? Oh, yeah. Right. The really creepy camper dude with the orange hat. Yeah, who's his... about to get busy with his best girl he... who goes into the tent. You know what? Like, which this okay. guy. <laughs> At this wait, at this point, hadn't they inv- evacuated though? And we were wondering why these people were still here. Yeah, they only evacuated bit- certain sections okay. of the park, which gives us a hilarious scene of people panically running out of this park. Yeah. It's a stampede through the woods of the park with all these backpackers, yeah. like, ah, ah, and you're hearing on the radio, like, everyone above blah 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 has to, you know, evacuate. That's, and yeah, because that's part of their sexually charged arguments mm-hmm. when he was like, you have. Why are why isn't everyone evacuated? And he's like, well, they're evacuated from those sections. He's like, the bear doesn't have a map. Yeah, like, what yeah. are you talking yeah. about? And I'm sorry, the way that you don't handle this by going over the loudspeaker, you handle this by taking your little golf cart around, going to the campsites, and being like, okay, we need you to stay calm, but we're gonna have to, to evacuate pa- you guys. Yeah. I think it was now. on the yeah. radio, wasn't it? It was like a radio broadcast. There was, yeah, yeah. T- not a good way to handle it. That's how you make people panic. You yeah. want to go to? E- I'm sorry, it's gonna be tedious, but you have to go to each campsite and be like, be chill, yeah, but leave. You know, yeah, like for sure. Mm-hmm. It occurs to me actually before, um, before the oh that that camper is like uh, grabbed out of her tent and then like smashed back and forth between two trees like the the like Jason which Voorhees the way it like. it looks is hilarious <laughs> it's hilarious and disturbing it's because it goes on for a long yeah, it time goes on for a really long time it's 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 messed up oh yeah because all the campers like run up to see this horrible sight of yeah. her being like between and these I, two yeah uh, and I gotta say ranges. when we first see this this camper. The dude with the orange hat. He is like creepy as all. Like, but he's a happy I, I, guy. He's he's so creepy. But then, like, when we watch and we see that his his best girl gets killed, I'm like, fuck this guy. Like, he's devastated because he knows that she was way out of his league. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's <laughs> like, I am never gonna get that lucky again. He's got that thousand yard stare, like he's about to go do something crazy in the name of vengeance for his girlfriend. Yeah. That's what he looks like, and it's. Yeah. With a person like that, you got to tread carefully. Treat him like a bomb, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like I felt for him. That's why they, like, ushered him out of the ambulance. Yeah. yeah. You were right in the ambulance. Now. Yeah. They should have put the foil blanket around him, too. Yeah. 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 I don't think they had those back then. When they, did the foil blanket They didn't have come shock around? blankets yet. Yeah. yeah. yeah, not yet. <laughs> Oh, That's such a comforting staple in movies. The shock blanket the shock when blanket. someone hands you a cup of coffee. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, prior to that, we missed. There was actually, uh, what was it Tom, Joe, whatever, the um, the other uh, ranger and his girlfriend, the one that we thought was sleeping with mm-hmm. Christopher George uh, while they're trying to herd the deer or the deer, the bear. They end up discovering a waterfall. And so oh, wait, is this before the campers I or after? Like I thought it was after the campers. Maybe. Okay, I'm out of sequence here. I'm not entirely sure. No, I think it was before because remember they were very nonchalant about finding the two missing girls. They were like, oh, well, we can't find them. Guess we'll take a break. Oh, like, yeah. So yeah. I think it was before. I guess well, I'll take off all my clothes and get yeah. the water. While I'm on the clock in the middle of my shift. Yeah. like It's yeah. hot. Yeah. It's, it's, 
That's they're walking around in the woods. It's not hot. They're all wearing jackets. <laughs> but like, this is their job, Colin. Yeah. Like, this is what they do all the time. They, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing this is what she does all the yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She'll be like, I'm gonna go check the perimeter, and she really means yeah. gonna go take a dip at the waterfall. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's like, I mean, I'm gonna go soak my feet in the in the river. There's a beautiful waterfall there. He it's goes gorgeous. off yeah. to uh, like recon the ridge. Which yeah, that always... was the moment where I was like, oh, they're going to get it on. And then he's like, all right, well, you have fun. I'm going to go. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Your girlfriend I... just said she's going to go get in the water. Why well, are you leaving? Why is she stripping down? She's just going to dip her fin- feet in the water, you know? Because... Yeah, well, I figured she was actually yeah. going to go in. But you made a good point. Why is it in movies? Or you made a good point. Why is it in movies that, uh, you know, when they strip down to go in the waterfall, they still keep their bra and panties on. Right. Which are then going to get soaked for the rest of the day. Right. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? Just not wear those the rest of the day? You're in uniform. You have to wear your proper undergarments. <laughs> yeah. Right. You don't have those, you know? like, packed away. Maybe no. she does it often enough that in one She's got those... extras? Yeah. Maybe. Why did not I just wear a bathing suit, then? Yeah. That's or wear a true. bathing suit under your right. uniform. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. 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 And just keep a spare set of under... Tucked under a rock at the waterfall. Yeah. I, I would love. <laughs> I would love that if she had a little stash of clothes at the waterfall. But it's probably because of the rating. It was a PG rated movie, although yeah. they were shooting from far enough away. And PG, as we said in the seventies, is like uh, you know anything. Well, and goes. they have her in like so. a flesh colored bra, so yeah. it looks she like was she's topless. Na- topless at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, from the distant mm-hmm. shot. From a distance, it looked like it, but no, mm-hmm. it's flesh colored bra. But mm-hmm. she goes under the waterfall mm-hmm. to have a nice natural shower, and sure. what happens under there? Mauled by a grizzly. Yeah. A big, well, we should say a big claw comes out and, yeah. and like, like slasher style grabs her around yeah. the mouth and pulls her back. Yeah. It was so, brilliant. I instantly thought of like the old timey, like the cane to pull people off <laughs> yeah, the yeah, stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's what it looked like to yeah. me. Yeah. It was low tech. I mean, because clearly a lot yeah. of the kills in this movie are just like some guy with a gigantic fucking bear arm. Like, you know, reaching into camera and doing stuff. Yeah. Which I respect that. I would rather you do that than, like, abuse an animal or, like, force yeah. an animal or force people or, like, be, like, a roar situation where people are in harm's way trying to act with an animal. Yeah. Use puppets, use arms, use whatever you... I think this movie, I like that it goes to great lengths to avoid using a real bear. I'm fine well, with that. Oh, okay. I got some stories to tell you. Oh, saying, no. Oh, no. Real, there's definitely a real bear in this. So. Right. There's definitely but the f- a real bear. It's not a grizzly. I don't yeah. think it's like a brown bear or something like gotcha. that. The one at the end? Yeah. That's a brown bear? Is it? Is it a Kodiak? It's, some, it's not a grizzly, they said. I'm sorry. Kodiak, I, maybe. Because okay. it's a big bear. It's yeah. a big bear. Yeah. But so they bring this thing in. The movie basically takes its time in showing you the bear. Like, you know, you get bear POV at the beginning and right. then the bear hand or bear claw. Then feet yeah. of the bear, and then finally murder we get mittens. like the the murder <laughs> man. <Yes>. Nice. <Yeah. laughs> and then finally we get like the actual reveal of the bear. So in the scenes, I think specifically at the end of the movie, where uh, your actors are actually in the shot with the bear. Yeah. Uh, so the way that they did this, apparently this bear was raised somewhere. I think it was in California, and it was kept in a pen. And the pen had this green wire that ran around it that was electrified. And so basically the bear learned that if I go near the green wire, right, I'm going to get shocked. Don't do that. So they take the bear to the set. And put up a fake green wire. They put up a fake green wire. Oh, okay. Well, that's, I've so, heard much worse. I've heard yeah. much worse in movies with yeah. animals. Well, they so. didn't abuse it. Yeah. yeah. But it was just like, I, I for the, dan- the sake of danger, they were always like, the crew people had to basically stay on the other side of the fake green wire because he won't go over there. You know, that honestly doesn't seem like a bad way to handle this, you know, like especially in the 70s. Like, yeah, other than it living in captivity in a pen. Yeah, I don't love. Well, I think it might be. I'm not sure if it's like a famous bear. Is that the bear that they, you know, because there was uh, that one bear that was in the movie, The Bear. You remember the movie, The Bear? Yeah. Yeah. It was in like every time you need a bear, you went and got this one. I think it was in. It's like Dave um, the Bear or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was um, Brutus. 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 I think Brutus is a bear that has like a lot of credits. He's like a big brown bear. I think that's what Yeah. In the Edge Mm -hmm. with Anthony Hopkins and all that stuff. I think you always never cry wolf or whatever. I I guess what what I'm saying is like, I appreciate that like, they didn't force the bear to do right. things outside of what it oh, could okay. was right. capable yeah. of. Like yeah, I don't think they, they, did that. they knew when they were like, we just need to use a big paw for on a stick yeah. for the scene. Yeah. And I yeah. respect that. You know, there's Absolutely. at least one shot of a guy in a bear costume. Yes. I yeah. Yes, the there helicopter is. Attack, I love that. Like a brief, you know, you don't see it that long. So that's what makes it work. Mm-hmm. But it's like, even there, I was like, I was able to identify him. Like that's a dude backlit in a bear costume. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> um, 
They also, I think, in order to get the bear to emote, they said that they were basically dangling a marshmallow in front of it, and then they pull it away, and so that's why <laughs> a would, marshmallow. It, and then they dub the roar in after the fact. But it was basically it was making the mouth movements, oh. as it was trying to get to the marshmallow. Okay, that was actually that's <laughs> adorable. That's there, really cute. There's definitely times in this movie where the bear is having a great time playing, and it's supposed to be menacing. Like yes. when it when it knocks down the guard tower, it's like. Fuck yeah! I'm like, it's not growling at it's all. It's having fun. Its mouth is completely closed, but you're hearing growling right. sounds for like in the post audio. But it's like, yeah, let's let's yeah. play with this shit. There like, was there were several times that we got like a roar, but you could see that its mouth was not moving. And yeah. I was like, this bear is having so much fun. Yeah, because yeah, it's the noisiest bear that's ever lived. I mean, it's always mm-hmm. roar, yeah. Roar. And then you look at the bear, and it's like just you know standing there, right? But, just doing bear things. Yeah. yeah. I love that scene at the guard tower because it's unexpected, I guess, so, in the movie. I was like, oh, was you shocked. actually are going like, because uh, Tom, whatever, yep. the bereaved, right? Mm-hmm. After his uh, fiance or girlfriend is killed at the waterfall, ends up joining the hunt for the bear, ends up on a guard tower, and the bear shows up and knocks the thing, pushes it off, <laughs> knocks it over. This is done by like the bear just like shoving back and forth yeah. against and, like it's how they get having it to do fun. That, it's, having it, it's having a great time. <laughs> but yeah. I loved this scene because I didn't expect this because like I didn't expect that this bear is so bloodthirsty that like he doesn't even care if he can't eat you. He still wants to kill you, even if it means knocking a whole tower down. He'll See, fucking do it. I definitely saw it coming. Really? Yeah, I saw the bear like because obviously we kept seeing like the bear point of view. And it was like watching him in the tower, and then you kept seeing, like, kept cutting to like him not seeing the bear, and then it kept like we kept getting good shots of what the tower looked like. Oh, okay. Oh, I okay, was gotcha. like, okay, this tower is coming down, and that bear is taking it down. Okay. <laughs> That's what's going to happen right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a good scene. It I is mean, a good scene. You know, technically, meh, you know, but I got what they were doing. Right. Um, the um. The bear, so there's hunters go in after the bear. Mm-hmm. They eventually capture a cub, uh, right? And they think that maybe it's yeah. the bear's uh, kid. Which so is they, definitely just a black bear. Yeah. It's, like, yeah, they're it like, is. it's a, I was like, oh, it's a black bear. And they're like, it's a cub. I was like, oh, that's what we're doing here. Okay. I, I thought first it would be just like a mistaken identity. Like, yeah. it's because like black bears in real life, they're like raccoons. Like, they eat out of your trash. And if you yell at them, yeah. they run away. Like, yeah. they're terrified of people because they're so small. Right. Yes. Yeah, because uh, they end up like, I don't know, they're wrestling with their, like, petting it, basically, and saying, it's like, like a puppy, yeah. Yeah, and then they decide to uh, chain it to a tree, and like maybe that'll get the bear to come in. Did not see this coming. <laughs> this <laughs> what was, happened? This was unfortunate. Cannibalism, yeah. which, unfortunately, yeah. is a part of nature. I know with lions, like, male lions will kill cubs that are not their own, because, like, it's it's a whole, like, spreading my seed sort of yeah. thing, like... Uh, so, but I didn't know bears did that. So that yeah. was I learned, I learned something. Movies, I learned learn, something. Yeah. Yep. Learn this is why you watch movies because oh, yeah. they're so factual. <laughs> so yeah. The time. yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Holly, obviously, this is a nature documentary. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we know this. This was uh, Christopher George's nature series yeah. part of his career. Yeah. Yeah. Wild America yeah. with Christopher George. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This was called. Yeah. Yes. We may have to watch Day of the Animals at some point because that one. Like all the animals go crazy because the ozone layer is going thin and the sun zaps them. That might be our future, Colin. And he goes nuts. Leslie Nielsen before airplane. What? This has been on my list for a long time. Day of the Animals and Grizzly have both been on my freak show list for a long time. I want to watch this. All right, we'll come back to it. We might. Like, we need to give it a little time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. We -hmm. might actually experience that, though. That could happen to us. (laughs) That's depressing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I guess, um, there's a there's the group of the three guys come together. Mm-hmm. Um, how did the helicopter pilot Don get involved in the in the chase? With well, the bear. Well, helicopter Don. They needed aerial shots. They needed to get an aerial view of of the the park. This seems completely ridiculous to me. Why? They're basically like we're gonna fly over because we see that this is a gigantic like you know huge forest right. preserve. We're going to fly over it. Maybe we'll be able to see a bear. And it's a sea of trees down there. Well, it's a 15 foot bear. Yeah. And like, oh, that's right. Because Scotty tells us <laughs> yeah. 15 foot, 2,000 pounds. pounds. Yeah. yeah. And if it's man eater. And if it's that big, it's dangerous to be on the ground. So it seems like it'd be easy. Because like we right. see people go on horses and it does not end well. Like, right. Being on foot with this thing is, you're not going to win. So you got to get right. above and it. And at this point, there's already been like five people killed. Yeah. So yeah. they got to find it. Colin, that would be like in Jaws if they went swimming looking for it. Instead of getting on a boat, <laughs> you know, true. like it's very true. Well, there's a scene where the um, 
if I'm keeping my my kill meter running here, that mm -hmm. uh, the bear eventually does wander into town or close to town. It wanders into a, uh, a oh, yard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, major points for this scene. Major I, I applaud this points. scene. I I really do. It's, I mean, we we just had we just had the bear cannibalism and the little sweet little baby bear died. So I was a little scared of where this was going, but. I oh. love the like symbolism of this that it's like this idyllic family yard mm -hmm. with a, literally a white picket mm. fence. Yep, it's adorable. This kid in a white t-shirt. This is like purest pure wholesomeness Playing you can have. With a white a rabbit. A white rabbit. <laughs> yeah. And his mom's putting laundry on the clothesline. Yep. It is Americana like like yep. idealism 100%. Mm -hmm. And I was like if they don't fucking kill this kid I <laughs> Like, what is the point of the scene? You right. know, like, what's the point? Because we've been told at this point, like, he's cannibalistic. He's had a taste for human flesh. So, like, human flesh is going to be what he wants now. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, the I rabbit. Like the, you, you guys were scared for the rabbit. <laughs> like, oh, no, he's not going to kill who the rabbit is. Because they were <laughs> showing us the rabbit a lot. Yeah. So I was, I was like, we're seeing the little boy and the rabbit. It's going to be one of them. Yeah. And, and I uh, don't want it to be the rabbit. <laughs> but it makes sense it's not the rabbit because, yeah. like, that that's just nothing to this right. grizzly at this point, you know? It's like if you were saying, I'm hungry and you ate one kernel of popcorn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like That's not going to do shit. Exactly. Yeah. So he fucking takes this little kid's limbs off. Yeah. yeah. And you see it. And we see it. We see it. We see a kid get his leg and like his arm. Like, <laughs> well, you don't see it get coming off. No. I think that, you know, he gets him in a bear hug. Yeah. Kid's screaming. Mom comes out. And then the kid flops down on the ground. With the bloody stumps, and yep. it's like, holy shit! This kid has stump prosthetics on. Yeah, that's dope. Like we've yeah. said it before, and we'll say it again. We love a movie that has the balls to injure children. Yeah, do it. Love, love it. it. <laughs> Go there. You know what? You other guys worry me. <laughs> Go there no. because no. it shows. I know what it's doing. It's like yeah. setting the stakes. It's like I, not yeah. even the kids yeah. are safe. Yeah. Colin, I love kids. I love them. <laughs> but I do. Not in movies. They're. Fair game. Well, I'm just saying, have the balls to go there. Because it's a movie. Who cares? It's not fucking real. Just kill the kids, you know? Like, <laughs> like that was alligator. I know you weren't here for alligator, I Holly. Not. But alligator oh, had a very similar scene where when we were watching, I was like, they better follow through because there was a lot. It was, it was even more set up for the scene, in the alligator, than it was for this one. Yeah. And, the, and like an alligator, they didn't show it, but it still happened. And I, mm -hmm. but the way. The way they didn't show it was still really interesting, if that makes sense. The way that whole scene was shot was really yeah, well yeah, done, yeah. so that, it worked. That scene gave me nightmares because I saw it when I was a kid. I, I, gotta, I gotta fucking watch this movie. Here, you do. I, it's so, great. Like, I gotta watch this movie. Basically, the way they convey a kid was eaten is that a diving board is bouncing, but no one's on it. And it's genius. Oh, no, you actually see it go right Do into you? the throat. I thought you thing. didn't yeah. see that. I no, thought it was like a cut right back into the mouth is <gasps> in the in the pool. Wow. I thought it was like that they cut inside out. to yeah. the birthday party and they cut back out in the back. Oh, okay. No, you actually but, see it. Unless yeah. I've uh, you know Mandela affected myself, I'm pretty sure that one of us has. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, need, I need to watch this and confirm. And yeah, wasn't it that movie. wasn't it that kid's birthday too? Like it was his party, yeah, right? Because they were forcing him to walk the plank. Or yeah, because it was a pirate like themed birthday party. Yeah. Okay, but enough about it. <laughs> you have to see that movie. Go listen to our alligator episode. Yeah, still not available domestically to God stream damn. or to on Blu-ray. So you're gonna have to go far afield to hunt that one down. One, another Jaws uh, imitator that mm -hmm. I think is probably one of the best ones. Um, so, um, so we get our three guys, and they're basically now. It's like, did my question is, did Christopher George get fired? Because after I think right. the kid is killed, or maybe before the kid is killed, at some point it's like. You're not doing your job, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Christopher George is chewing out Kittredge for like, you just want to go to Washington and that's why you won't close the park and blah, 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 blah. Right. And then he's like, you're out. You're fired. One of their heated and he's like, exchanges. Screw you. Yeah. Or something like screw that. Screw you. Yeah. It was. Oh, I felt it. Yeah. Because then I afterwards, it, this like pre uh, it predates Jaws 2 mm -hmm. where uh, Brody was... gets fired where he's like sitting out drunk and like. Right. But this was before the little boy was right, mauled. Right. Yeah. This was before. Could be, because then then after the little boy is mauled and his mom is killed or whatever, then he goes back and he was like, are you going to give me my give me what I want kind of thing. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, I think he was like fired for maybe an hour long enough to get drunk. And then he hired him back because the little boy died. And he's like, all right, maybe you're right. Yeah, Cause Scotty <laughs> gives him like a whole speech too, about yeah. like, if you're just going to sit here and nurse your injured pride and yeah. nurse your whiskey or he whatever. He has a good line though. He's like, 
don't he's like don't take this all on your shoulders they're not broad enough <laughs> but like there's a pause in between to yeah. where you're like oh that's nice of him and he says that and you're like oh you're a dick. Like, <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> well, Scott, he's got his own, like, because his thing at that point is like, I'm going to go out and bag this fucking thing myself. So he wanders out into the bush. And this is the Don't movie. be a hero, Scotty. <laughs> Damn it, Scotty. <laughs> Damn it. We're kind of like, there's there's certain things that the film does at this point that I was mm. kind of like, all right, what you know, for the sake of efficiency, why are we doing this? Scotty goes out and, uh, you know, he's on horseback. And so the first night, he beds down in the woods. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Then cut to the next morning, he's fine. And like, okay, so there was no no bear attack, yeah, no nothing. It was, it was just like, okay. Then I, I guess they needed us to know that a day had passed. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he survived overnight, so there's no drama to it, I guess, was the point. But, you know, there, there was no, like, dramatic Yeah, because yeah, at this point, um, the ranger and, and, um, and Don are off. On their own, and Scotty's off on his own. That's right. They're up in the chopper. Yeah. With the grenade launcher. That right. May or may not factor into the end so of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got two search parties happening. Right. Because yeah. we're that's right. A kid has been killed, and we're definitely gonna. Oh, the kid hasn't been killed. I'm sorry. No, it feels he, like he was, he, but he survived. Because the way they say it, they're like he's he's alive, and she's like he lived, and he's like a part of him did. I was like Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Not his <laughs> his arm part didn't live. Yeah. But the rest of him. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he's basically saying like the kid basically died. Yeah. Like he'll never his life will never be the same. Yeah. He's kind of alive. Yeah. Jesus, dude. Yeah. I wasn't sure like when they brought because the way that scene was orchestrated, I was like when they wheel him out on the stretcher, it's like, oh, shit, did he die? But no, they don't address that or whatever. So, yeah, the, uh, the two guys in the helicopter out. Scotty's running around. Mm-hmm. There's a whole to do with uh, hanging up a deer, and maybe we'll be able to track the bear with the deer. Yeah, but, but at this point, the at this point, the bear has a strategy. He takes the bait. He circles and comes back. That's what he's been doing this whole time. That's takes how they're tracking him. The, yep, on he the takes big the bait. He circles. He comes it. back. He takes the bait. Circles. Comes back. So that's what he does with the deer. So then he's like, "Well, he's gonna come back. So we gotta, we gotta wait for him." Yeah, but. But like dramatically, ruins that. I just wonder if some of these, because there was the uh, when the when the bear, when they're waiting, uh, the, the two different scenes, I guess there's the Scotty scenes and then mm-hmm. the, the Don and Kelly scenes. Mm-hmm. And in the Don and Kelly scenes, right, they set up the deer, they hang it from a tree, they get in the blinds, and then there's all suspense because we see that the bear, you know, point of view is getting closer. Mm-hmm. And then. He cocks his weapon while he's waiting. He doesn't see the bear. He just cocks his weapon. The bear freaks out and runs. And so they give chase and chase the bear. Mm-hmm. And then that goes nowhere. The bear gets away. Right. And you're like, okay, no dramatic confrontation with the bear. It just gets away. And they come back and the bear has taken the deer. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ah, he got us. Now we're going to have to wait another day. And you're like, okay, mm-hmm. well, I guess we got to wait for this, you know, mm-hmm. uh, confrontation again. Then Scotty, he's out in the woods. Yeah. And. Actually, I did kind of like like how this is uh, approached. He finds the deer carcass and then ties it to his horse and rides through the woods with the deer carcass. And then what happens? Oh, damn it, Scotty. <laughs> the horse makes the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. The <laughs> horse gets decapitated. <laughs> but it, like a chicken, he stands for a few seconds and takes a few steps before yeah. he collapses. That, that, was, that was solid like because they didn't actually show it, but you still got the idea of it and I was yeah. like that was pretty solid well, you, you see the horse head flying yeah off. you yeah. see yeah. the head fly off and then you see like the feet like the close up of the feet yeah, yeah. and I was like that, that's pretty effective and then you see it fall over and yeah. oof that was I felt more watching that than most of the people getting murdered <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true just cause it it was so shocking I didn't expect that it was like, quick yeah yeah it was real quick it does work for like shock shock yeah. effect you yeah. know it's like boom then something mm-hmm. all of a sudden there's a grizzly there and attacking yeah. you um, Scotty's taken down. Unfortunately. Well, okay. <laughs> the bear digs a grave. But yeah, okay, so tell me about this, because this is, I guess, a, a problem that I had with the movie mm. was just how they did this. So what actually happens to Scotty? He is, is his horse okay. is killed. And yeah, then... so so we we learned early on that the the grizzly will actually like bury its prey and then come back for it later and, and finish it off. So we see Scotty get taken down. And the bear buries him in a, a shallow grave, essentially. But then we see the dirt moving. Scotty's not dead, Colin. Scott, yeah, Scotty's alive. Holly and I are literally punching the air yeah, like, like yeah, Scotty! 
<laughs> and I was like, oh my God, there's going to be a Grizzly 2, Scotty's Revenge, and Scotty's going to yes. come back. <laughs> but then the Scotty pulls himself out of the grave. We hear the growl from behind him. Yep. Yeah. And then the, then there's like, they don't actually show it. I but think Scotty's it's, killed twice. He's killed yeah. twice. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell what the are you doing? What the fuck was that for? Yeah, what, what was the point of bringing him back? If you're help, just motherfuckers. Kill him again? Jesus. What does this serve? Like, right. what does other, and like, right. because I get maybe it's to fool your audience, whatever, but it lasts for a minute, mm. maybe. Oh, but you why? Know? Why in the name of everything didn't Scotty pull himself out of the grave and then slowly drag himself to where the other two were? Don yep. is getting attacked, yep. and then eventually the ranger is about to be attacked, and yeah. then from re- from behind him, the rocket launcher goes off. Yeah, Scotty saves the day. Yeah. Why yeah. did that happen? Something. It feels like yeah, I, I feel like I was robbed of not having him part. You know, like the three guys together take. You know, since they've been together through most of the movie, that you don't put them together in the climax. That it what? takes Scotty out. But I'm like, even if you do that, you don't take him out twice. No, exactly. <laughs> you no. know, you just kill him. Well, and for how knowledgeable he is, it feels like this is not how. He should have gone out. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just kind of like, oh, okay. He's out of the picture. And so then that leaves the other two guys and their helicopter. And yes, you do get a bear versus a helicopter scene, right? Because they yeah, land. Yes, they're like, know. take yeah. it down in the clearing. We're going to make mean, this thing you run do, off. But I was kind of hoping it like be in the air and the bear attacks it while it's in the air. Like takes a swipe at it. Yeah. Takes some propellers out or something. Yeah. What I was hoping, right? And this is hope of all hope. It didn't actually happen. But I, in my version, it would. That they would tie the uh, you know deer carcass to the helicopter, yeah, right, yes. and then kind of have that go through the woods, like Lake then, Placid, yes. Yeah. And then yes. the bear would grab it and pull the helicopter down. Yes, out of the sky. yes, absolutely, yes. <laughs> and why? I mean, we've got our th- we've got our like trio of of good guys that we're rooting for. Why didn't the fucking uh, park supervisor, why didn't he get taken down by the bear? Why do we have right. to lose Scotty and Don? Right, but that asshole gets to live because right. he's just been sitting That's up in bullshit. his office the whole time. He yeah. should have been attacked. Yeah. yeah. Damn it, Scotty. Yeah. 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 I know, nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing becomes of his character or the photojournalist. They're just kind of written out I'm of okay the movie I'm okay with not point. having any. Uh, she's not a leading. Why was she a leading lady? She's not a leading lady. I'm sorry. Mm. I'm sorry, Joan. I'm sorry. I haven't seen your <laughs> your vengeance movie yet. I will. Not a leading well, lady. Maybe that's why. Maybe Linda Day George turned it down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there wasn't. It didn't follow through where it was because it mean because it becomes about these three guys in the right, end, right? Right. And they're and I'm kind okay of with that. camaraderie slash antagonism or whatever. Right. It's like that's what it's going to be. The these three guys who know the the terrain and know the animal yeah. and all that stuff taking on this fucking bear and. They do end up taking on the bear because uh, Duder uh, Don ends mm-hmm. up like exhausting his uh, th- his shots at it, mm-hmm. which have no effect. We yeah. never get. That's the other thing. The the, the tranquilizer. Yeah, yeah Chekhov's never got tranquilizer. That. I know. I was thinking that too. Scotty makes a big deal out of the fact that he's got these bullets, and like it's never explored in the movie mm-hmm. or never brought up again. Right. Yeah. Pointless. Uh, that's so. why you don't have those scenes. You introduce it to have it pay off. If you don't <laughs> right. pay it off, then it's like, what the hell was the point that's, of it? Yeah. It's dumb. Um, so then maybe the ending of the movie was rushed in production or something. I don't know. But uh, it's like we we get the we get the thing we want. We want to see the bear explode by the rocket launcher. <laughs> yes, we, get, we do. We want to see that. And we get it. It delivers. But did it deliver enough? That's the question. Right. I we didn't it, we didn't get a good one liner. We didn't get a good like aggressive like. Fuck you, like Yeah. And we, Jaws had come out the year before and set the tone with the smile, you son of a bitch, you know, yes, before you actually blow him up. We didn't get that satisfying. It was just like he struggles a little bit and then it goes off. Yeah. Cause I got that was like for some reason he wasn't able to fi- find out what where the fucking trigger was on yeah. <laughs> the thing is the bear's like running yeah. at him. Which I mean then, I get it. He's a park ranger. He shouldn't really know how to use a rocket launcher. Although he was in the true. war. Was he also in the war or just done? I think he was too. Okay. I mean, it seems but like that doesn't mean he used a rocket age. launcher. I mean, I don't know. Don't they don't they train have... you on all that stuff? I have no idea. It doesn't feel like there's idea. much to it, though. I feel like he could probably figure it out point pretty it that way. Yeah. And you pull the trigger. Yeah. I would it think goes so. goes that way. Yeah. yeah. I would think so. I apologize to anyone listening who's just hating us right now. <laughs> right? Who's a rocket <laughs> launcher <laughs> expert. <Yeah. laughs> I'm sorry. Was I don't it a rocket know. launcher, a grenade launcher? I'm not even sure. It's a grenade launcher. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. It looked like a rocket launcher. It shoots explosives, you know? It shoots explosives. And that bear blows up real good. In a big yeah. fiery, great, poof. great explosion. Yep. Yeah, but unfortunately, Don does not yeah. make it. He is, it. Uh, he is taken down by the and uh, credits. 
like, I'm sorry, Colin. I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's how the movie is. That's it's like, and we're done. <laughs> and we're done. But yeah. the thing is, like, I was rooting for that. We're sitting there and, and the, it's like panning out. We're seeing him walk over to Don. I was like, credits, credits, credits. We don't need any follow up story. Yeah. Sure enough. The 70s always delivers yep. yeah. credits roll. Cr- credits. Movies dead, nowadays. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Movies nowadays could learn from this. <laughs> yes. Just end yes. it. Yes. Yes. Be yeah. confident <laughs> enough in your movie to just end it. It's like we were not invested in any of the other stories enough to wrap them up. Just roll the fucking credits. Trust that your audience is smart enough that you can just end it now and yeah. not have to explain everything yes. else. I know we don't need fucking post credit scenes or mid credit scenes don't for every it. fucking yeah. movie we don't either. Need it. Yep. I concur. Yes. Mm-hmm. I actually did like Christopher George's performance there at the end because he's he's there's a lot of things that he's grappling with, right? Yeah. Where part of it was he didn't actually want to kill the bear. No. You know, it's like I had to kill the bear. Like Don is like, we're gonna go kill this bear, right? Everybody else is kind of like you know, Scotty it's a majestic d- creature. Scotty it's- did not want to kill the bear. Well, Scotty, Scotty absolutely made that very didn't want. Clear. Yeah. He did not want to kill the bear because he's the naturalist, right? He had his yeah. special mm-hmm. tranquilizers that we never got to see. Yeah, yeah. But I got mm-hmm. that feeling from you know he's like he's sad that all yeah. these people have died. He's sad that he had to kill the bear. He's sad that yeah. like just I get the, the whole, impression yeah. he's just not about killing in any capacity. He yeah. just doesn't like it. Yeah. He said earlier to the photojournalist that he likes like those times when he can just walk around giving tours and talking to people about nature and shit. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I like him. <laughs> the uh, movie was marketed. I, I can't remember if we actually said this on the podcast or not, but uh, comic book artist Neil Adams did a, uh, a poster, which is the most famous poster from the movie that, uh, you know, obviously got a lot of people interested in it. And it's an I- iconic image of, you know, bear snarling with its arms out. It's a pretty great um, poster. It's wonderful. The only, the only, my only complaint um, is that Scotty or Tom, neither one of them are on the cover, but first victim is. And that, Scotty wow, right that's there? rude. Or not Scotty, uh, Tom. Tom is oh, not oh, on the. Yeah. Not a big enough. Uh, Tom is. <laughs> but, oh, but, but first victim is big enough. <laughs> Tom should be on the cover, yeah. Colin. Maybe yeah. she was from a soap opera or something that care. was popular. Than that. Okay. I don't care. It's Tom, great, like, Tom suffered enough. It's great illustrative detailed poster. Yeah, which it is. It's nowadays, poster. posters are just a form of marketing where every inch is, is bought by uh, an actor or a studio and it's an argument over real estate and my head needs to be this big, my yeah. name needs to be there. This is an actual piece of art, which yep. we don't get anymore for it's posters. Pretty great, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, so you were we, were, we were kind of alluding to this, all right? You wanted Grizzly 2, Scotty's Revenge. What would you settle for Grizzly 2 Revenge? I mean, uh, <laughs> who's revenge? Yeah, who's getting I, I'm revenge? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> so I haven't seen this and an, few it, people have. Okay. Because this movie was <laughs> shot in 1983. Oh, wow. All right. That's much later. Yep. Uh, I don't think he's the star, but he's in it. John Reese davies is in it. What? Uh, and George Clooney. Pre-fame George Clooney makes wow. an appearance, Shut I think, up. as a backpacker who gets killed by a grizzly. Shut up. This movie remained out of circulation and was released in January 2021. <laughs> <laughs> it just came out this year. Colin, you have your finger on the pulse, <laughs> apparently. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So My jaw's on the so floor we, But right we now. don't know whose revenge it is, because obviously the bear's dead, so it's got to be a new bear. Well, I'm, new I'm bear. sure he's got a mate or something. I watched the trailer. There's a scene that takes place at a nighttime, like, giant, uh, you know, like, not like a Lollapalooza, but a big, uh, you know, uh, concert with uh, big screens and all that. And I, I don't know if a bear comes through there and... Well, God, I, I hope so. <laughs> so you have to see the trailer for Grizzly 2. I'm sure Revenge. Sean will bring it. Yeah. <laughs> Un, I'm like, why was it out of circulation for, you know, what, 30 years? Mm-hmm. I don't know. But hey, or is it 40 years? Oh, almost 80, 40. Almost 40. Yeah. Yeah. But at least they got released. So there you go. Um, wow. You okay. learn something new every day. <laughs> I learned a lot today, actually. <laughs> right. Bears bury their. I didn't know that. <laughs> Nature. Bears, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I like. I like that movies go and do all this research, though, so I don't have to. They just give it to me. Right. When I watch. Right. Totally um, factual. Yeah. Do you guys ever think with movies like that, like when it's something that someone really famous was in early on and it's like out of circulation, that that famous person like sued was like, it. "Hey, bury yeah. this." He was in Revenge of the Killer Tomatoes or Return of the Killer yeah. Tomatoes. Yeah. So it's yeah. Like, you I know. can't. I don't know. I. I Clooney doesn't strike me as the kind that would be like, don't let that circulate. Yeah. I feel like he wouldn't care. 
I'm sure there's some people that have egos like that, but yeah, sure. he doesn't strike he doesn't, me as one. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that like Jennifer Aniston hasn't been like Barry Leprechaun. You know, <laughs> like I'm kind of yeah. surprised by that, but <laughs> maybe you know. she appreciates that. Because of the kinda, like, sweet her big, yeah. residuals that she still yeah. gets from yeah. all those Leprechaun DVD releases or whatever. Yeah, because she's hurting for money. <laughs> <laughs> What percentage of her filmography? Wouldn't it be funny if that was one of those? Uh, if it was like yeah. Friends and then Leprechaun yeah, or her Leprechaun. residuals? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go around the room and tell you individually what we each thought of tonight's movie, Grizzly. But before we do that, we're going to have to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wonder, like, if uh. Igor for his size is, like, bigger or smaller than, like, the rest, whatever he is, you know? Like, <laughs> like is he a gigantic is, version is of what he, he is? Runt? Yeah. Is he, like, yeah. Is he, like, the 15-foot, 2,000-pound version know. of what he is? No. Yeah, because we were talking about this before. Do you see Igor as like a lurch kind of guy or like a hunchback? No, he's like a hunchback. Yeah, I see him as a hunchback. In my mm-hmm. mind, for sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, okay. he presents differently to different people. Yeah. So right. <laughs> he's a chameleon in that yeah. way. Chimera. He's a shapeshifter. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Well, we should remind you how you can participate in this exciting interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Sarnet Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sarnet Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. And you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Grizzly, Kryptonian Orphan writes in and says, This movie taught me that humans aren't safe anywhere. The ocean? No, there's sharks. <laughs> Lakes or rivers? No, there's piranhas and alligators. The city? Yeah, right. There's murderers, rapists, and serial killers. The woods? <laughs> Fuck no, not even there. There's 18-foot grizzly bears and husky, yeah. hockey masks killers. Space? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I mean, if you make a, uh, as we learned in slugs, if you make a salad, it might kill you even. Yeah, so, I know. you know, yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's what horror movies do. <laughs> yeah. they, they just try to find every single, no, that refrigerator can kill you. Uh, Owen Is Johnson. Is there a horror movie that's just like about someone with bad cholesterol? There's got to be something like right? that, I'm sure. The stuff? No, I don't the know. Uh, the, the, stuff the, the stuff is stuff getting there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the stuff is more like consumerism will kill you, you know. Right. I haven't seen. Uh, we saw. We watched Killer Workout, but we didn't see Death Spa. So who knows? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe yeah. Who knows? A, yeah. yeah. Um, Owen Johnson writes in and says this grizzly needed a reverse mohawk and a charred corpse to fit his demise. If only Canon had made this movie. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, he's talking about Death Wish Three. Yeah. 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 I'm surprised that wow. Wow, the grizzly has the same death as that guy in Death Wish 3. Yeah, yeah the guy in Invasion USA. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of surprised Kanan so, didn't jump on this like subgenre. So, at least as far so as I know. rocket launcher deaths is on the wall. Yeah. yeah I know, right? Yeah. Congrats, rocket launcher deaths. <laughs> Woo! Rocket launcher deaths. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sylvester Stallone, Jeffrey Combs, rocket launcher deaths. Yeah. Wow, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got to bring that back. I mean, because uh, you improve every movie. It never gets it. old. Yeah. No. Ever. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, did you ever want to see a helicopter and a grizzly bear fight? Well, you're gonna, as far as Jaws ripoffs go, this is by far the best deadly maulings, bazookas, preternatural forest animals. This movie has it all. Hmm. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Andrew Bradford says it's largely forgettable. Not much to it. The end scene is humorous though. I rented this along with the legend of Boggy Creek and I enjoyed Boggy Creek much more. Oof. I had the opposite experience. I think Boggy Creek is much more like a nature documentary than this movie is. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says, ah, yes, one of the first Jaws knockoffs. I saw this many years ago. I would prefer Jaws itself or Alligator or even Orca. I remember having some memorable moments, but not really holding a candle to Jaws and not as much crazy fun as Alligator or the craziness of Orca. I can see that. Uh, Simon Carter says this has been on my to watch list forever, and now I'm just gonna wait for the freak show judgment and see if I should. Oh, the pressure's on. Stay tuned. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, last week we watched a movie called Cowboys and Aliens. DJ Dog Manfish writes in and says, "All right, I'm gonna have to rewatch it. I'm gonna go for the gold and watch the extended edition because I'm a glutton for bad movies." 
I mean, someone's got. Let to. us know if there's a <laughs> if there's a whorehouse in that. We we hypothesize there might be a little yeah. bordello scene in that. Got to be. Or or got to be. Drunk who yeah. Gets or very excited yeah. Buck by flowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called Moonraker, yes. a James Bond movie. Carl S says it was nice to hear you fun loving folks talk about a Bond movie. Most of my favorite Bonds are from the 70s when realism and reason went right out the window. Yes. I, I feel bad for kids these days who will grow up with nostalgia for Daniel Craig's mopey movies. I, I get what you're saying. I, I can get what understand you're saying. that. Yeah. They Sky, are very serious movies. But Sky Falls sure. flawless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also asks, have you guys seen The Humanoid directed by Aldo Lato? It's a cheap Star Wars and James Bond ripoff featuring both Richard Keel and Corinne Clary from Moonraker. It's not the worst, at least not in a bad way. I've heard of it. I have not seen Sounds it. Sounds interesting. I'm intrigued. All right. Uh, B Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, I never actually realized how impractical those ladies' space uniforms were until now. In space, mm-hmm. everyone can hear you say, Gosh, it's chilly in here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Mitch Morgan wrote, writes in and says, Drax had the best one-liners of any Bond villain. My personal favorite being Mr. Bond. You reappear with the tedious inevitability, inevitability of an unloved season. <laughs> that was pretty good. It's poetic. He did have good ones. Uh, it's poetic. Uh, yeah. Simon Carter says, uh, I didn't like what they did with the character Jaws, but they nailed the casting. I met Richard Keel at a con once, and he was a super nice dude. Aww. I bet he'd be a great person to meet at yeah. a con. I can see that for sure. Yeah. I I, maybe, yeah, because I think I either saw him at, because they were playing Moonraker, mm-hmm. I think, at the one that I went to. Mm-hmm. So I may have seen him, but I don't remember actually meeting him. He mm-hmm. seems like someone that would really appreciate people coming to see him. I think so, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you've, uh, got, if you've got stories about meeting him, yeah, let us know. That's right. Share on our social media. Um, mm-hmm. So now we're going to go around the table, tell you what we thought about tonight's movie, Grizzly, starting with... Michaela! All right. What did you think of Grizzly? I think that the animal attacks subgenre is an endless, like, well for us to g- always go back to. And I mm-hmm. love that about it. Yes. We've done quite a few if you look at our history. Mm-hmm. I did a whole summer where I picked nothing but these types of movies. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we barely scratched the surface. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I love that. I love that about the horror genre in general. But I really love that, like, they would grab onto an idea and they would just run it into the ground. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And um, I think, as far as if we're just categorizing them as Jaws ripoffs, I think Alligator might be a little better than this um, just because it's a little more ruthless and it, the clip it moves at is is faster. And like I like that it gives the alligator an origin story. Like yeah. like Jaws doesn't have an origin story. Grizzly doesn't have an origin story. But the alligator you see from when he's a little baby <laughs> to when he becomes a killing machine. Colin, you're going to have to give me alligator. Yeah, yeah. you have to <laughs> yeah. see it. I mean, I it's know. great. Yeah. So I love that. Um, that being said, that's not a knock against Grizzly. I think that Grizzly is like just a smidge below it. I think that Grizzly is definitely worth watching. I think I love seventies, like camping aesthetic. I I'm kind of sad. I never got to experience like a seventies camping resort. Um, I, I liked how much everybody was trying in this movie, how much everyone was committed to it. Everything feels real and lived in about this world. It doesn't feel like a soundstage. Nothing, like, like obviously the claws look kind of goofy sometimes and stuff, but mm-hmm. I'll take that if it means you're not abusing an animal. You know, mm-hmm. it's fine by me. Do what you got to do to make the movie work. Mm-hmm. Um, it went places I didn't expect. I didn't expect like no sex scenes, but yet almost naked waterfall kill, yeah. you know, like yeah <laughs> those are two two things that seem like they should go together but um and you know i i don't mind a jaws rip off i don't mind movies ripping off really good movies if they do it like in their own way really well you know it, it's not something that bothers me obviously jaws is going to be the best version of this movie it's just can't be topped it's a perfect film but i admire what they tried with this i think it's really well done i think it's entertaining it's 91 minutes it doesn't overstay its welcome at all Definitely recommend Grizzly. Holly, what'd you think? Yeah, I this movie was fun. I it gave me everything I I, I wanted. I wanted more. I did. <laughs> I wanted so much more, but not in a disappointing way. Mm-hmm. Like I was it was kind of it was kind of fun that like the entire thing felt like a porn that just never happened. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Like the whole thing was like movie foreplay yeah. or something. I don't know. It was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I dug it. I was on board with this whole movie. Like the acting was, they went for it. Like they, I don't know, Christopher George was fantastic. And the, the the chemistry between all of them, I was like surprised by how into it I was. Um, 
yeah, the the gore is pretty solid. Like I I when you said it was PG, I didn't really know what to expect. Like we said in the seventies, PG, you'd never know what to expect. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the kills were good, the gore was good. Yeah, this was a fun movie. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I have not seen Alligator, so I cannot make that comparison. I will get on that, I promise. Um, but as far as like a Jaws ripoff, it's pretty solid. Um, and yeah, it's just a fun movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I see why it, it's it's got a reputation. I see why we've been circling this movie for so long, and I'm I'm glad we finally got to it. Yeah, I definitely recommend Grizzly. This was a good time. Well done, Colin. No, I'm surprised actually, because I was like, man, this is like a middle of the road kind of movie. I mean, if we're looking at it, probably honestly, but, uh, and you know, like I said, I think it does have some narrative issues toward the end, but I think what makes it appealing is the interplay between, it gets like three really good actors in there Well, four, if you count, you know, uh, the guy who plays, uh, sorry, what's his name? Uh, Joe Dorsey, the, uh, <laughs> the other guy, no. uh, their tension their tension was fantastic. Yeah, they're like, we're doing a real movie. Yeah. You know? It was great. Even though it's gonna have a guy with a big grizzly arm, like, you know, attacking people. But that's what makes whatever. that's what makes movies like this good. <laughs> yeah. That they're taking it seriously, but it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. what makes it good. That is the that's why we love these kind of movies versus the Sharknados and the sci-fi yeah. channel movies where they are trying to be goofy. It's like, no, no, that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. You have to mean it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, we're doing Jaws again. This <laughs> yeah. is it. Yeah, I, I mean, it. there were so many movies doing that, you know, became like uh, Jaws ripoffs. I think um, uh, I think Alligator would be the best thing that Jaws, um, you know, aside from like the Jaws sequels that that, that spun off of Jaws. Um, but I think people haven't seen it because it's out of circulation for so long. So Piranha is probably the next one that, you know, people would say. But, yeah. you know, when you when you talk about, uh, you know, calling it a Jaws ripoff, I'm like, OK, well. You're right. It does have like a very similar structure to Jaws, but mm-hmm. it's different enough that you're not watching the same movie again. Because if you want that movie, I believe it's called Cruel Jaws, which is an Italian <laughs> knockoff of Jaws, which is like beat for beat uh, Jaws. <laughs> you're like, oh no, it's the exact same movie again. That's or what fun. was that uh, Halloween ripoff that we watched where it was like, this is Halloween offerings offerings. Yeah. yeah. Like if you're too close, then there's no fun to it, you know? Right. Um, I do think that the other, um, um, selling point to the movie is that, you know, the PG rating in 1976 was, uh, <laughs> yeah, different than it is now. It's like, yeah, the, the, just the, um, the gore, I guess was like the shock gore, uh, you know, the, the moments you feel it, it's like those, they're brutal attacks by the, it makes this creature seem dangerous. Even when what you see is, you know, a guy with a big bear paw. Uh, I think it really, it sells it, you know? And uh, it is like we were saying, it's too bad that William Girdler didn't go on to do, you know I mean? Mm-hmm. Not that he would have a great career or anything, but it w- would have been interesting to see this progression because I do think uh, day of the animals is a better made movie than this one. And Manitou is a better made movie than that one. And so we were kind of looking at a, a progression of style, mm-hmm. you know, a uh, filmmaker learning who uh, during a period of time where you could actually, you know, be releasing real movies mm-hmm. and, and kind of stepping up your game all that way. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I would recommend Grizzly. I thought it was fun. And uh, it seems like every summertime we're always reading headlines about, uh, you know, grizzly bear attack. So it's never really going to get uh, old in that way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I recommend Grizzly out now on uh, a new Blu-ray from Severn Films just released this new uh, version of it. So you should check it out. I guess it means it's Freak Show approved. It is. Hell yeah. It is. All right. There you go. So that's the answer to uh, the listener question. You should watch should it. watch it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Sean! Sean's proxy. What is Sean yeah. <laughs> What is Sean making us yes. watch next week? Next week, we're watching House of Wax from, what was it, 2005. Are Oof. we actually going to watch it this time? I know this has been... Yeah, hasn't this been danced around like a lot? Um, he definitely... He definitely brought this before and then changed his mind last Wait, time. is it is this his like placeholder title? Like he just says that until he actually decides. That's what, what I'm he wondering. Wants. That's why yeah. I'm like, mm, I'll believe it when we actually see it. Yeah. All right. So this week, <laughs> well, we can't re record this ending. All this right. tag. So yeah. this means we're committing to House of Wax. All right. That's Next it. week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.